my name is Kelly and I'm a senior specialist at SAGE. On behalf of my colleagues and the entire SAGE family, I'd like to welcome you to today's webcast. In today's presentation, we'll be taking a look at the importance of fixed asset management as well as the tools that are commonly used to manage fixed assets. Most importantly, we'll be looking at using a third-party fixed asset management solution integrated with an ERP system and the many advantages that this hybrid or toolbox has over other commonly used fixed asset tools, including Excel spreadsheets, internally developed tools, tax software, and ERP fixed asset modules. Before we get started, I want to give you a high-level view of how the content in this webcast is organized and how I'll present it to you. Today's presentation is divided into two main sections. In the first section, I'll be discussing the most common and significant negative consequences resulting from inaccurate or incomplete fixed asset management data. And in this section, I'll also present the many positive consequences arising from accurate and complete data. In the second section, I'll be giving a detailed presentation of a step-by-step -step guide that anyone could use when guiding themselves through the overwhelming process of selecting a fixed asset management solution that best meets their wants and needs. Let's get started. So why is fixed asset management so important? Why is it such a critical business function? The main reason is that fixed asset management directly and significantly affects a company's bottom line. What kind of effect it has depends on how well the assets are managed. Inaccurate or incomplete fixed asset data often results in tax and insurance overpayments, higher than necessary annual audit fees, increased disclosure risk, compliance failures, and elevated risk of losing assets, theft being an example of this. In contrast, having accurate and complete fixed asset data ensures that tax and insurance payments are accurate and that annual audit fees are no higher than they need to be. And with accurate and complete data, full disclosure is available at your fingertips. You'll be confident that you're fully compliant with rules and regulations, and you'll also be able to safeguard your assets. So if a company's fixed asset arrows are striking the target outside of the bullseye, or perhaps just missing the target altogether, it's likely that the management tools they're using simply are not adequate for the job. Fixed asset management is complex, and using tools that aren't up to the task makes the job all that more difficult. When using an inadequate tool, it's difficult to keep track of assets, mainly in situations when they're spread across multiple locations. There are numerous ongoing additions, disposals, transfers, and when assets are being taken out of service. Likewise, when using an inadequate solution, Basic asset management activities, such as maintaining fixed asset data and related calculations, and providing required information to different stakeholders becomes unnecessarily time-consuming and extremely labor-intensive. With many tools, generating reports is difficult, as they do not include adequate reporting mechanisms. They don't provide predefined reports, and they don't allow for easy modification or even the creation of custom reports. There are many tools available to manage fixed assets, and each has its own strengths and weaknesses. Of course, to complicate matters, a tool that is effective in one situation may not be effective in another. Given the number of options available and the complexity of comparing and contrasting their strengths and weaknesses, anyone facing the project of selecting a new fixed asset management solution can be forgiven for feeling a bit confused and overwhelmed. If you're one of the people that find themselves in this situation, don't worry. For the remainder of the webcast, I'll be presenting a step-by-step -step guide to selecting a new fixed asset management solution that meets your specific wants and needs. And along the way, I'll be identifying the most commonly used solutions, comparing and contrasting their strengths and weaknesses, and presenting the advantages of using third-party dedicated fixed asset solutions that are integrated with an existing ERP system. This is an active process and it involves engaging in four sequential activities, defining, exploring, choosing, and building. The first step is just to define your needs. During this process, it's helpful to consider the following factors. First is books. The number of tax books and or sets of tax and accounting calculations you need, the number of states and countries you do business in, 
and whether or not you need to adjust cost basis or other depreciation elements differently for U.S. GAAP, IFRS, federal, or state tax purposes. Next is reporting. If you need to report easily over years and across entities, for example, consolidations, if you need robust reporting and ad hoc query capabilities, if you need to produce tax forms from the fixed asset system, and the types of reports management and auditors will expect to see. Access, if you need access to the system from anywhere, the number of users needing access to the system, and if access to fixed asset data should be available to authorized users only. Next is functionality. If you need to automate additions, disposals, transfers, asset updates, and asset adjustments. If you need to perform projections and what-if scenarios. If you need to reconcile between book and tax easily. If you need compliance controls and risk management. And if you're having trouble with audits, for example, problems with security, stability of calculations, or compliance followed by the advanced fixed asset accounting features you would require. Next is tracking. If you need to track and manage invoices and budgets during work in progress projects before a new fixed asset is actually created. If you need to take routine physical inventories of your fixed assets. And if you need to track where assets are located and who is currently using them. Finally, resources. If the use of IT needs to be minimized, and if you have dedicated staff on hand with expert knowledge of the tax and accounting rules and regulations related to fixed assets and depreciation. The second step in the process of selecting a new fixed asset management solution is exploring. As I previously mentioned, many solutions are available and each has its own set of strengths and weaknesses. Excel, Microsoft's spreadsheet program, is arguably the most basic tool used to manage fixed assets. On the plus side, Excel is inexpensive, flexible, and familiar to many people. However, Excel has many drawbacks when used in this context. For example, its inherent limitations mean it's not a viable option for organizations with more than 100 assets. Extensive setup is required, and in addition, setup and subsequent use require high-level expertise. Automation is minimal. Excel does not include predefined tax and accounting rules or reports for financial or tax. And Excel does not provide security or an audit trail, and reconciling between tax and financial books is difficult. Some companies opt to develop their own fixed asset management systems. The benefits of these are internally developed, homegrown tools is that they're designed for the company's specific needs. Therefore, there is the potential for customized reporting and tax logic can be built in. On the downside, these systems are expensive to develop, support, maintain, and update, therefore place high demands on IT resources. Also, to keep these systems up to date and in compliance, you must stay on top of the ever-changing rules and regulations, and doing so requires high-level expertise and a lot of time to invest in research. Additionally, the usability of these systems is typically poor and users need extensive training. The ability to reconcile across tax and financial books also tends to be quite limited. Other companies elect to manage fixed assets using tax software such as TurboTax, LACERT, and CCH ProSystem FX. The benefit of going this route is that the tax software is usually up to date with the rules and regulations. As with the previously discussed tools, however, Tax software has many drawbacks that greatly limit its usefulness as a fixed asset management tool. For example, while preparing your tax return, you have to go through all the invoices to find assets that were purchased that year, and then go back and determine if any of those fixed assets were disposed of or transferred. Likewise, tax preparation is the only time during the year that you actually have information about your fixed assets. Additionally, your tax asset list may be incomplete because it won't account for fixed assets that were expensed in prior years. It may also not track obsolescence, casualties, losses, and assets taken out of service. Using tax software also limits reporting capabilities. For example, you're not able to generate depreciation calculations for financial statement purposes based on U.S. GAAP or IFRS. 
An ERP module that is purchased as part of a set of modules included in an ERP solution is another example of a commonly used management tool. On the plus side, these tools support financial and tax calculations. They generate journal entries for adding, disposing of, and depreciating assets, and provide easier reconciliation back to financial statements and tax returns. On the downside, the module interface is designed more toward matching the look and feel of an ERP system rather than toward improving usability and users' productivity. Consequently, performing even simple tasks can be quite cumbersome. Also, modules provide only basic reporting. As a result, creating custom reports is difficult and often requires the assistance of consultants and or IT. Other shortcomings include the fact that the focus of compliance is on the general ledger and accounting, not on fixed assets, and the high cost of hiring consultants needed to set up, modify, and update the system. Also, the vendors of these systems typically offer only minimal technical support due to the fact that their employees are not well versed in depreciation. In addition, the vendors are generally very slow to incorporate changes in tax laws into their system. The final option is the integration of a third-party dedicated fixed asset management solution with an existing ERP system. As mentioned at the beginning of this webcast, this type of system offers a long list of advantages over all the other options previously discussed. For example, this hybrid solution supports U.S. GAAP and tax rules, as well as what-if scenarios and comprehensive projections. Also, with this option, the user has the ability to set up different costs and methods for different books. You can also adjust assets and track asset changes, import and export data, and keep up to date on new tax and accounting rules and regulations through vendor-provided training and communications such as newsletters or webcasts. Furthermore, this system provides advanced search and customization capabilities as well as automated updates. Best of all, using this type of tool does not require tax expertise. As with the other options discussed, this hybrid tool does have some downsides, but in comparison, they are few and relatively minor. For example, the fixed asset solution may look and behave differently than the rest of the ERP system. However, in many cases, this will be to your advantage. The next step in the process is to choose a fixed asset management solution based on your needs and the relative strengths and weaknesses of the available options. Once you've chosen a fixed asset management solution, you will likely need to build a business case that outlines the reasons for your selection and details the proposed benefits this tool will provide. Whether your business case is in the form of a formal written document or more of a casual presentation, you'll obviously want to make it as compelling as possible. So, how exactly do you make the case for your fixed asset management solution compelling? Be sure that you fully understand the complexities of fixed asset management and that you can communicate them clearly to your target audience. You'll also want to be sure that you fully understand your company's compliance requirements for both financial and tax and also communicate these clearly. Also, be sure that in your business case you calculate a return on investment for each of the fixed asset management solutions you evaluated. For each of the solutions you looked at, you'll also want to be sure that your business case addresses the need for support, consultants, and the associated costs. How much time will be required to maintain assets? How much effort will be required to modify or extend each of its tools? The reliability of the vendors and the quality and extent of their customer support. And if a vendor does not closely monitor changes in the tax code and provide regular, comprehensive software updates, then your business case should also figure in the costs of performing tax and accounting research. So this concludes today's webcast. I really enjoyed presenting this information and I hope that you found it interesting and useful. Once again, on behalf of the entire Sage family, I want to thank you for attending this webcast and I urge you to contact a SAGE representative at the number that will appear on the screen if you have any questions about the information presented today. Thanks again.